I hid behind a tie carousel, sort of peeping at them. Thinking, you hid? Well, sort of, You're not six hid. Foot 12, well, I didn't Stephen. Want, I didn't want to stare at them, so I discreetly was behind the tie carousel. There's a story that I've, to- I've told before, but it was, for me, a very important and exciting time when I'd, I'd written this musical, the book of a musical, Me and My Girl, which had been on in... In, in the West End, and then we tried it out on Broadway, and amazingly, it was a hit there. And so, I was often going shuttling across the Atlantic as new casts and so on were coming into the musical, and got very familiar and fond of New York in the eighties. And I was walking down Madison Avenue, and I saw Andy Warhol walking down there with a couple of, you know, a posse, an entourage, mm. I suppose you'd call it, and that unmistakable pencil-thin body with those high cheekbones and the bleached hair. And I was yeah, really quite surprised and excited. I'd met many actors, obviously, in the course of my life so far, and a few politicians and sporting people, but Andy Warhol was a yeah. whole class of new and exciting, and I did The Unforgivable. And, and in fo- Manhattan. Yeah, yeah, exactly, his his home his home patch. And so I followed him. I followed him down for a few blocks, and then he turned into the, you know, the, the flagship Versace store. And I went in as well. Not the kind of place I would ever go. It's, you know, those... Those clothes are for snake-hipped, wasp-waisted... Preempted my next you know, question. Italians who are about a foot shorter than I am. So, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm never likely to wear Versace. But, but anyway, I went in, and there he was embracing the store manager, or maybe it was a member of the Versace family, and um, uh, they were all having those, you know, espresso with a little twist, uh, but, you know, which, if you remember, Beverly Hills Cop. <laughs> Beverly Hills Cop, yeah. Exactly, that kind of thing. It was that period, really, and I hid behind a tie carousel sort of peeping at them. Thinking, you hid? Well, sort of, You're not six hid. foot 12, well, I didn't Stephen. Want, I didn't want to stare at them, so in, in, I discreetly was behind the tie carousel. Um, and then someone came up to me and said, yes, can I help? And I panicked and just grabbed the first tie <laughs> I could. So whenever I see that tie, that, that day comes back to me. So ties can do that too. Brilliant, brilliant. I mean, you mentioned Cary Grant, and mm. uh, Terry Thomas always had an immaculate knot, even, abs- even if it was a bow tie. Yes. I mean, John Snow is 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 quite famous yes. for his neckwear. That's right. Well, it is a little piece of real estate on one's body where one mm. can go to town in terms of design and form and pattern and colour and texture, which you know, you, if you did that in a, with a jacket or trousers, you, you'd be a flamboyant rock star. You'd be Elton John or something. It'd be a very different kind of statement. And oh, he's top to toe, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But most of us would be a bit shy of of doing that. But but are quite prepared to you know yeah. go to town a bit when mm. it comes to neck joy. Do people use it as a symbol of themselves, or is that just by guilt by association? Oh, well, think? there is there are of course so many different forms of. T- I mean, there are work ties. I have a tie with, covered in bumblebees. When I look at that, I remember when I was seventeen. I think. Uh, I had a job at Bonds of Norwich, a department store, family run, very much Norwich's Are You Being Served Grace Brothers right. equivalent. It's now John Lewis, and uh, uh, but at the time it was still family owned and there was Mr. Richard and Mr. Eric who used to walk around. And I, I worked in the household goods and then I was promoted to to furniture. I think they were slightly snobbish and liked my accent. And they okay. thought I would make a good, you know, Captain Peacock style so floor walker. So I had to wear the tie and it was the work tie which was covered in bumblebees and I and uh, Mr Ellis my my colleague on the floor would patrol up and down uh, speaking grandly to people ah sir has remarkable taste <laughs> sir has instinctively been drawn to the finest table in Norfolk <laughs> whatever you know. They would stare at one of 17, for heaven's sake. It's a <laughs> pompous ass. But, but it, was, it was fun. And, and so, again, looking at that tie, I remember that. And the tie I'm wearing here, it comes from my days at university. There was a dining, drinking club called the Cherubs. And I know how gussy this sounds. But, but uh, I was going. excited in my first uh, year to be uh, invited to join and join the initiation society for it, in which you drink unfeasible quantities of alcohol out of an ancient silver chalice and um, and promised to glorify the name of the cherubs, uh, which is the, the club, uh, afterwards. And how will you do it, you're asked. And I said grandly, well, I'll probably wear this cherub's tie on television. He looked at me and thought, he thinks he's going to be on television, does he? It's only my first year. In fact, I was only a month or so later because I was on the 
the college um, university challenge team, so I did wear the tie for that. But the chap next to me, whose name was Mike, he said, I will properly honour the cherubs by taking this tie and taking myself to where cherubs should be, in the heavens. And we looked at him and thought, what's he talking about? Is he going to go ballooning with it? What? And it turned out he was doing fast jet uh, training with the RAF in the, in the vacations, and he was le- teaching himself Russian, and he was doing a postgraduate degree in astrophysics. He was training to be an astronaut, and he became an astronaut. Mike Fole, his name is, and he has the British record for the most days spent in outer space of any Briton, something like 373 days in space. And and so he was the proper cherub. So I look at this tie and I realise how inadequate my career has been <laughs> compared to some great hero like Mike. <laughs> 